Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. Corey Rice in this segment. He's joining us here as Medical Director of BioT's Training Clinic and Research Facility to discuss longevity precision medicine and bioidentical hormone replacement therapy for both men and women. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Rice, thank you. Thanks, Neil. Glad to be here. Well, a bit of your professional background, if you would, let us uh, in on who Dr. Corey Rice is and um, what it is that you do. Yeah, so I'm based out of Dallas, Texas. I um, own and operate two full-time clinics, and my training is in internal medicine. After a few years of doing that, I, I sort of pivoted into the world of lifestyle medicine and longevity medicine and the idea of functional type medicine, which is essentially just what we like to call root cause medicine. Mm -hmm. So just helping people understand the benefits of nutrition and, you know, exercise, hormone replacement, things like this. And it's, it's been a, an awesome, awesome ride. Longevity precision medicine. Does that encompass all of what you just mentioned, uh, the exercise, all of, all of those things combined, or is it something more specific? Yeah, good question. So longevity precision medicine is really a newer type of calling, I guess, in, in healthcare in America. And and really what it does is it focuses on the individual versus the population. So it takes an individual and it, you know, goes through some some data point testing and really refinement and what makes that individual themselves. So you look at genetics and you look at, you know, advanced cardiometabolic testing and you look at some pretty sophisticated internal sort of granular granular testing to come up with a a snapshot of someone's health on the continuum of health and disease. And then what you do is you just tailor their needs to really what their their goals are and what their uh, data points reveal. So, so longevity medicine is really the idea of extending the lifespan through supporting the health span. So it's, it's trying to not necessarily stop aging, it's really just trying to slow down the process of aging so that someone doesn't feel like they're aged, but they continue to feel well and perform well as they go through life. Is part of how you feel it's as you age you a big age. part of longevity? It is. And so, you know, it's interesting as a physician, I wasn't really trained to really go through the feeling aspect of patient care. It was really more about testing and diagnosing and then sort of treatment planning around prescription medications and things like this. But the idea of like asking a patient, how does this make you feel or how do you feel or how would you like to feel better really wasn't a concept that was trained, i.e. in medical school or in residency. And so you're exactly right. The idea of, of how you feel and how you perform really is at the center of, of being precise in someone's health care and then hopefully extending their longevity. You mentioned people aging but not feeling as they're aging, which prompted my question about feelings. Physical feelings, obviously, but is the emotional aspect of, of aging, knowing, uh, thinking about your, your mortality, is that part of this longevity precision medicine too, uh, not just physical but the mental aspects as well? It absolutely is. Um, as all of us age, we sort of get a certain degree of apathy and a certain degree of, well, I just don't want to. Or, or the things that used to get me up and excite me don't do that anymore. And so part of that is just is, 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 is part of aging. And, and as you sort of individualize therapies and approaches to, to how to help these people, uh, without question, their, their cognition and really their, their mental acuity and their engagement in their own life really does go up because you're you're essentially, you know, making them feel better. And, and that's a good thing. As we age, of course, um, our hormones um, go through significant changes. Uh, where does uh, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy come in? Is that a part of longevity precision medicine if a person uh, demonstrates uh, to be a good candidate for such? It is. And so that's an important point. So to the listener, you know, you want to, and, and again, most of these these, these opinions I'm giving you are based on my clinical observation and, and practice, but, um, you know, you want to at least start with getting measured, getting your levels checked of these various hormones. Uh, and you use the term bioidentical. Bioidentical is really, quite frankly, human identical. So it's a, it's a molecule 
that is identical to what you and I produce as men and what women produce as well. And so it's not, it, it's really indistinguishable from what she's making in her own body naturally and what he's making in his body naturally. And so as a consumer, as a patient, you have a choice in how you balance or assess or ultimately treat your hormones. And, and those choices really fall into the synthetic branch of hormone replacement and then the natural, i.e. bioidentical, i.e. human identical branch of replacement. And that's a personal decision and a personal choice. Um, but yes, you're, you're correct. So as part of longevity, I think it's only appropriate that someone's hormones are assessed appropriately and then you know, given good education and feedback about what the literature supports when it comes to hormone replacement and what, you know, some of these myths are out there mm -hmm. about hormone replacement and how we can potentially dispel those. What are some of the myths that you can bust for us here today when it comes to uh, testosterone, estrogen, sort of these things that we're obviously going to have to deal with as we get older, which are definitely going to affect how we feel physically and emotionally? Yeah. So, I mean, to keep it simple, if you look at a reference range across an entire cohort of the population in women or men, and I'm referring to a lab reference range of values. Now we're going to talk about numbers. What matters more than the numbers is the person and how they feel. But let's just talk about the numbers because people like to deal with numbers and they get it. They go to the doctor, they get blood work, they see numbers. When you're talking about hormone replacement, all that I in my own practice and many colleagues of mine that do what I do advocate is optimization of those values. So let's say you come in with a lab value of a testosterone that's, you know, a reference range between 300 and let's say 1,000. All we're wanting to do is to get that to the upper sort of 15th to 25th percentile of that reference. We're not trying to trick the body. We're not trying to over do it and overdo natural production, what we're trying to do is, is optimize things. It's just like in grade school. You want to be in the upper 10th percentile of your graduating class. You don't want to be anywhere else, you know, in the middle or the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with hormones. We're just trying to get to that upper sort of range. And when you do that, when you look at studies around things like prostate cancer or breast cancer or heart disease or cognitive decline and all of these things, it's pretty clear that when you optimize a female or a male's hormones, you get better disease prevention, but also symptom alleviation. So they just feel better. So it's really a win-win when you go for that optimization. Is it possible that longevity precision medicine can actually prevent diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and others that we commonly, well, we believe that we're all just destined to, to deal with these, especially as we get older, but quite possibly before that time. I don't think it's just possible. I think it's, it's, it's highly likely okay. if, if you know how to surround your, your sort of body. If you, get, if you get a trained, you know, seasoned healthcare provider who can help you understand what I call different levers you can pull throughout the day, if you start pulling these different levers throughout the day and you really you know, pay attention to the to the pivot points and the action steps that you that you come up with with your healthcare provider. There's absolutely no question that you can stave off you know age related decline, which the number one risk factor of cancer or heart disease or any of these things that you just mentioned is age. So if we can slow down that process, then there's no question. Then we we sort of hopefully prevent that. Now the the blessing and the curse of prevention is the blessing is obviously you can prevent disease. The curse is Neil is that. We don't have this sort of crystal ball on our shoulder that tells us, hey, if you don't make these changes now, in seven years, you're going to get a diagnosis of cancer. Or, hey, if you hadn't followed these recommendations or done these hormones or ate this way or exercised this way, then by the age of 51, you're going to have diabetes. I mean, we don't have that sort of crystal ball snapshot. So that's really the blessing and the curse. But but the evidence is becoming pretty sound now around you know, these action steps and these levers, so to speak, that when you pull them, you can absolutely stave off and avoid and at least prevent some of these common age related diseases. Corey, give us a website where we can learn more about BioT. Yeah, so www.biote.com. 
I appreciate you uh, lending us some of your time this morning, Corey. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and I'm hoping that you'll uh, return and we can speak more about this topic. I would absolutely love to. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Corey Rice, Medical Director for BioT's Training Clinic and Research Facility. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com healthprofessionalradio.com.